Adventure Time as a series has never been afraid to experiment, and no episode perhaps showcases that idea better than Season 5, Episode 16, Pahoy. Coming right in the middle of Finn's relationship with Flame Princess, Pahoy uses Finn's romantic teenage confusion and turns it into one of the strangest outings the show has ever put out, and that's what we're going to talk about today. In this video, we're going to go through the entirety of the episode and discuss how it uses some unreal settings and symbolism to transform Finn's adventure and pillow world into a thematic masterpiece. Man, having a girlfriend is hard. No, being crazy is hard. The episode starts off with Finn, Jake, and Bimo being stuck inside as a result of a knife storm as Jake tries to cheer Finn up by building a pillow for it. After some really fun animation, we get to the root of Finn's troubles, being that he's perhaps overthinking his relationship with Flame Princess. I told her a joke the other day, and she didn't even laugh. I guess it's over between us. Jake and Bimo both try to soothe his teenage angst, as Bimo immediately concludes that she just must not have gotten the joke, and Jake tries to explain that Finn is just overreacting to something that just isn't that important. The next moment with Jake is probably the most clipped part of the episode, as his cup analogy is thematically and comedically perfect. This is literally my favorite cup. <laughs> Now it's gone forever, so it's not real, and I don't care about it anymore. The Jake and Bemo shenanigans that start off this episode and make up the very tiny B-plot in the rest of the episode are really stinking funny, but Finn is obviously less than amused and decides to spend some alone time in the pillow fort to let his mind, quote, fester. As Jake warns his brothers about the dangers of festering, Finn crawls deeper and deeper inside the pillow fort, continuously getting more and more surprised at just how deep it goes. Eventually, once completely in the darkness, Finn finds a hole in the blanket, and when he pops out, he finds himself in a completely different world. The backgrounds in this shot, just like the rest of the episode, are truly tremendous, as the vivid palettes juxtapose against the eventual dark thematic backing. More on that later, but the door behind Finn closes, forcing him to make his way to the nearby pillow town, where he discovers the city in playful chaos as a result of the blanket dragon terrorizing the citizens, which Finn immediately defeats in the most gruesome way possible for a creature made up entirely of pillows, blankets, and feathers. The citizens of the city all come out to meet their hero, and we get to meet the leader of the town, Quilton. All the people in the city make the world feel so filled out in such a short period of time, something that ends up being vital to the feeling that the later portion of the episode tries to elicit. Anyway, Quilton praises Finn for saving their city with a variety of bedding-related puns, and in order to thank him for vanquishing their foe, there was a party in celebration of their flesh pillow savior. After after the cut to the party, Finn becomes visually uncomfortable as he starts to clearly miss his friends at this point, but this slightly begins to change once he and the audience meet Rosalinen, daughter of Quilton and the complete opposite of Flame Princess. Where FP is fiery, no pun intended, Rosalinen is laid back and as chilled out as you would expect a pillow person to be. She and Finn have a cute little interaction before she asks him to dance, which while he initially refuses on the basis of his royal girlfriend back at home, he eventually agrees to. The dance between Finn and Rosalinen serves as the background of another quaint little moment between the pair, which ends in one of the funniest endowendos in the series. I mean, where I'm from, blankets and pillows are used for bedding. Well, they're used for that here, too. <laughs> Finn is eventually overcome with homesickness and asks Quilton for his help in finding the portal back to his home world. Quilton seems genuinely interested in helping the protagonist, but shares that he has no idea what Finn is talking about, eventually turning the conversation back around to be about pillow pastries. This gag takes us to the treehouse for a short scene with Jake fishing back up the mug that he apparently got rid of his emotional attachment to, perhaps signifying that his message about just getting over things isn't as easy as he made it out to be. Jake doesn't seem interested in exploring this idea with Bimo, instead of bringing the conversation back to Finn as the episode follows suit. However, as we get back to the pillow world, we don't actually get to see Finn, instead settling on a pair of pillow children named Jay and Bonnie, who appear to be the kids of Rosalinen. The episode lets the audience ponder why Bonnie has Finn's hat on for a moment, before the bombshell reveal of a much older Finn, immediately revealing that our protagonist has been living out his entire life and having a family while we were watching Jake and Bimo shenanigans putting this episode pretty quickly into the important category of the series. Adult Finn is exactly how you would imagine 
mentioned, being a goofy but good father and husband to his family. The interactions between the family just feel so real, as the episode uses such a short amount of time to really get you attached to the idea that this is Finn's family now. Family time ends up being interrupted by the arrival of a now elderly Quilton, who delivers the news that the Pillow People have finally discovered some kind of a clue towards finding the door back to Ooh, and it's kind of a shock when Finn immediately becomes desperate to follow it. Despite the fact that the audience knows that the episode has to end with Finn going back to Ooh, it still feels odd that he's focused on his past with Jake when his new reality has been in existence for so long. This realization is cut by another fun Jake and Bimo gag, which ends abruptly as we cut to an even older Finn still chasing after that door and meeting with Rashida, an oracle with apparent knowledge of the portal. However, Rashida simply, uh, flatulates and asks Finn whether or not he actually wants to leave Pillow World, giving no information or inclination towards the actual existence of the door. A teenage version of the not-so-coincidentally named Jay and Bonnie wait for their father outside, along with Rosa Lennon, as he brings the lack of news with him. As he begins to let his mind, quote, fester once again, this time on what the Oracle could have possibly been hinting at, Rosa Lennon begins to weep at the inevitability of her husband and the father of her children leaving, and just asks Finn that when he eventually does, that he remembers his family back in Pillow World. This thought brings Finn into this hilarious false memory of his last moment with Jake, which causes him to realize that he's been neglecting his family for the last 20 or so years in order to try to hunt down the family that he left as a teenager and isn't even sure ever existed. This leads Finn to make the decision to not chase after what he once had anymore, and instead focus on his current reality. One final time, we cut back to the tree house for a quick and a bit on the nose conversation about Jake missing his kids because they grew up so quickly, as the show literally immediately cuts to Finn on his deathbed. Because the audience obviously knows that Finn isn't going to permanently perish here, we get this really funny death scene with an elderly Finn goofing off until his final breath as his family crowds around him, a reminder of just how much life he's lived in this 11 minute episode. As Finn dies, we get this really cool set of kaleidoscope-esque visuals before this scene just hits out of nowhere of Finn bumping off the tongue of a definitely never again important in the series space demon and flying into the abyss where he pops out of the top of the pillow fortress of the treehouse as the young boy he left it as. Finn interprets his pillow life as a dream before he's interrupted by a phone call from Flame Princess who admits that she just now got the joke, proving that Bimo was right all along. When Finn gets off the phone though, he has no memory of his pillow life as the episode ends seemingly unsatisfyingly. What dream? The dream you were just talking about? Huh? The dream you just had in the pillow fort? <laughs> As you may have noticed, I went through the episode a little bit faster than usual, and that's because I wanted to have plenty of time to break down everything that happened. Before we start trying to break down what all of this meant, we first gotta answer a few questions about the events of the episode, and before we do that, I have to warn you that everything I'm about to say is probably not yours or anyone else's exact interpretation, as this episode is perhaps the most thematically divisive in the series. Anyway, let's go ahead and dive into the two big questions that this episode leaves us with, one, did the events in Pillow World actually happen, and two, what is going on with Gold by the end of the episode? To answer the first one, while the Chinese story that the episode is vaguely based on is in fact a dream, I think that the events of this episode do actually happen in some shape or form, as Finn pretty clearly isn't just waking up at the end of the episode. Now, regarding Gold, while I think that the idea that he was coming to destroy the Pillow World because he is the World Eater or whatever, and that Finn just happened to bump into him is cool and all, it seems like it's kind of overthinking what is likely just a cool way to show Finn a somewhat defeating death. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's talk about what this episode is trying to communicate, which I ultimately believe is a story about Finn needing to stop overthinking the past and focus on what's currently in front of him. The happiest we see Finn is when he's around his pillow family and not focusing on his past with Flame Princess, or when he's talking to Flame Princess and not focusing on his past with the pillow family. While Jay going back and getting his mug after a effectively telling us the theme in the first 60 seconds does illustrate that the show is aware that its theme cannot be taken 100% in all circumstances, Finn initially makes himself miserable by focusing on his past in both worlds, and is only able to achieve bliss when he focuses on what's currently in front of him. And while I get that some feel unsatisfied by Finn forgetting about his past life at the end of the episode, I see it as the completion of the episode's theme, as Finn is able to fully commit to staying in the present and move forward. Anyway, that's gonna be about it 
content for me. If you have something else from Adventure Time or any other show you want to see me cover, let me know in the comments or on my Twitter in the description. Either way, this has been Ample Samuel, and I'll see you in about a week with another video that has less implications of pillow intercourse. Thanks for watching. Thank you.